Patrick from the Backyard Science Lab, and today I am here and I was thinking about steaks. My dad always loves to make steaks with sous vide, which is cooking under vacuum. And we watch uh, a channel called Sous Vide Everything, which basically they try to sous vide everything. And, um, and uh, basically sous vide is, as they say, cooking a steak or any other meat under a in a plastic vacuumed bag in some temperature water. Usually this uh, water temperature is very low. Uh, we're gonna be trying for 135, and that's so that you can unlock more enzymes cooking by trying to raise the water temperature slowly. And so yeah, usually sous vide takes longer time, and this is actually how the fancy steak restaurants do it. Uh, is it and we have a sous vide machine, and what that basically does is it's a little thing that takes the desired, that heats the water up to the desired temperature. And this is how really fa fancy steak restaurants make their steak. They put their steak under vacuum in a plastic bag, they heat up the water, and they let it cook like that for a while. Then they sear the steak. And we like doing it the sous vide method, but then we also like camping. And in my Boy Scout troop, we do a lot of different meals and try to have diversity and uh, cook these fun meals. So we want to see if we can try to sous vide on a camping trip. And now one of our favorite cooking methods during a camping trip is this Dutch oven. And we use this Dutch oven for everything. I have made uh, barbecue chicken in this Dutch oven and a lot of other things that we've had for our Boy Scout troop. And so we filled this Dutch oven with water and there is a formula for this about how to heat air up to the desired temperature, but we want to see if we can heat water up to the desired temperature. So we've done some maths, and we think we have the perfect amount of coals, which is 16 on the bottom and letting it heat up. So I'm going to voice over this part as I start putting on the coals and getting this prepped. So here you can see I am salt and peppering my steak. Um, I make a lot of pepper on my steak, a lot, a lot of pepper. My favorite uh, steak that I usually get a lot of pepper on is in Outback. If you've read their steaks, highly peppered. And I really like that, so I wanted to try it on this steak. <coughs> uh, you can see there's strings around it. Ours uh, hold it together on some CV. And I'm flipping them over and putting these salt and pepper both sides, preparing these steaks for the sous vide. Not that much to talk about. But. Then uh, here I'm putting them in the bags and then I am vacuum uh, bagging them. So not with a vacuum, but I will just be using water and submerging it in the water while pushing the air out and it creates almost a perfect vacuum for these steaks to cook in, which is what you need. Um, we are going to be cooking these in a plastic bag. The heat of the sous vide is only around like 140 degrees, so it won't melt the plastic bag at all. See, I am doing my final touching of sealing off this plastic bag. Uh, then I'm putting these coals in. I wore a fire glove. Uh, I didn't think I really need, needed it, although it's just for a little bit of safety. And then um, I, counted these, I counted these out and put the right amount of coals that I thought I would need on the bottom. It turned out to work pretty well, uh, as you'll see later in the video. But uh, some of the coals are going to be on top and some of them are going to be on bottom. This reason, and there's actually going to be more on the top, this reason is so that it can cook evenly and also because heat rises, the same amount of heat um, would mean that there would be a different amount of coals on the bottom than there would be on the top because the ones on the bottom would generate a lot more heat to the thing that's above them than the ones above it generating heat below it. As you can see the water in that Dutch oven there, I'm putting my steaks in. 
It's not um, hot yet. And I didn't want to say that I used, uh, and I put that chain now to sink them. But I did use uh, tap hose water for this to try to make it as, try to make it as authentic as I can that we were really camping out in the woods here. Uh, so yeah, it was pretty cold as it started off, but usually you would use hot water. Um, you, yeah, usually you use pretty hot water. Uh, you can see that's one of the thermometers I'm putting in. This one is a Bluetooth thermometer, so you can see that one side will always be hooked to my phone. And I think I got some screenshots of that. I will edit in. Although, yep, yeah, that probe's going in there, and that will monitor the temperature of the stakes. Uh, and then this is another temperature reader that I'm using that was generously donated from my troop, from one of my troop assistant leaders and that I'm measuring the temperature on Hello guys, um, this is the 30 minute mark and you can see that the coals are dying down a little bit. This is usually normal for a Dutch oven like this so I'm going to start pushing these holes closer to start getting them to light. Uh, I should put a screenshot on the screen of uh, this thermometer which we have which is showing the temperature at the moment, it is around 97, which is pretty normal for how this sous vide method is going right now. And it is uh, coming along a lot like how our normal sous vide works. So I will check in in maybe another half an hour. We're 10 minutes later and our heat is up to 120 about, so we are going to start putting some of the coals on the top. And we want, we're want we going to leave all but six coals. Uh, we're going to put six coals in the bottom and all the rest oops, on the top. And um, that's because since heat rises, it is uh, we need more on the top to equal out that heat to cook our steaks evenly. And yeah, so I'm going to take all of these. I'm trying to move them to the outer edge because that's where the most heat dissipation or loss will be. So they're done. I'm going to be taking the bag out now. I personally like my steaks um, medium well to well, and so we were actually had really good results with this and got it to exactly 140, which is medium well, well temperatures. And so yeah, it was pretty successful on temperature wise, although we still have to take the steaks out and Boil them. You can see they don't look as good now, but we need to sear them. We have a charcoal grill um, that we will show, and that is where we have been heating up our charcoal, and also where we are going to be broiling these on. need to dap them dry because um or else they'll heavily steam up in their uh the boiling so we're going to put these steaks on here to be seared uh we took care of this i can hopefully put the picture up and it was about 700 degrees a little bit over so these should not need more than um seven no, more than 60 seconds per side I'm going to put these on in cup 60. So yeah, 
these um, while these these are fully cooked, you can see the outside isn't very brown. So when we're doing here, we're browning the um, fat and sugar just to add the extra bit of flavor. We also put um, chunk charcoal underneath. It's said to give um, better taste than charcoal briquettes or other methods of charcoal, although that may be a test in the future. I mean, if you want to see that. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to flip these. It's been about 60 seconds. You can see that nice sear marks on it. Ah, that's good. These are filet mignons. I don't know if I already said that in the video, but yeah. You can even see, I'm not sure about your camera angle, but you can even see some of the fats and sugar boiling and um, coming off of there. What is an interesting uh, thing that's happening here is while we sous vide them, all the bacteria is gone, even though the temperature only reached about 140 because of it was for an hour. While you might already may have heard from other places that you need to boil water at boiling temperature, 140 for an hour actually does also work to kill this bacteria. Not that there's hopefully anything on our steaks, but. Okay, it's been about 60 seconds again. I am going to take these off. Hopefully it doesn't melt the uh, cutting board underneath. Because we okay. sous vide them, these are about ready to eat right away because only the outside 700 degrees. Uh, this knife was recommended by Guga and sous vide everything. And yeah, it works pretty well for these steaks. I'm going to just try to cut these up. Not the best, best steak cutter. But See the inside, it's nice there. Okay, and for the final best test of the day. A very good steak. Really good for cooking literally in our backyard. Camping. So, filming crew. Delicious! Okay, we're back inside, and I have to say, this is truly amazing steak that. I wouldn't even notice if they switched this steak out for a steak that I would get at a fancy restaurant. And the incredible thing is that we just made this in a campfire in my backyard. And so thank you, sous vide everything, for teaching me how to use this sous vide and how to make these amazing steaks. Subscribe and like to this channel if you like what you see and want more. Also, if you would like to find out where I am right now, as this is part of the special thing that I have been hinting about recently. But anyway, I just have one final piece of steak left.